Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. So in this video, we will set up the whole navigation for our app using the navigation components library. We will start to go into our activity main layout here because as you can see, I already have a container layout for our fragment, our main fragment. This frame layout is the container. If you don't know what a frame layout is, that is just a layout that only has a single child. So in this case, that child is our fragment, but we need that container to easily replace the fragment later on. So what we will do is we will specify a fragment tag here, set the layout width to match parent and the height to. And what is now really important is that we specify a name attribute and set it to Android X dot navigation dot fragment dot nav host fragment because that is the most important fragment when it comes to navigation components because that is just basically the container fragment for all of our other fragments. So navigation components just needs that nav host fragment here to easily replace that with all of our other fragments later on. Then we also need to tell Android Studio that this is actually our nav host fragment. We do that by writing app colon default nav host and set it to true. Don't worry if this doesn't show any suggestions for you. That is completely normal. And we also want to specify app colon nav graph and set it to add navigation slash nav graph. Right now we don't have that nav graph of course, but we will create it next. So the reason why we need that actually is in this nav graph, we will specify the transitions we have in our navigation. So we just specify from which fragment we can navigate to which. And to actually create that nav graph, let's close off that tag. We need to go to our resource folder, create a new Android resource file and call it nav graph and really make sure to select navigation as a resource type and then simply press OK. And you can see it created a new folder navigation and inside our navgraph XML file. And you can see the navgraph is nothing different than an XML file here. The purpose of this navgraph is to specify the transitions of our fragments. So we basically define from which fragment we can navigate to which. And this is not only an XML file, we can also display this as an actual visual graph. And we can do that by switching to the design tab in the top right corner. And here you can see that is basically the visual mode of navigation components. And here you can already see that it recognized our main activity as our nav host fragment or that our main activity contains our nav host fragment. And you can also see that I forgot to assign an ID to that fragment. So let's quickly change that. Go to our activity main layout file and instead of that fragment tag, we will simply add an ID and call it nav host fragment. And if we now navigate back, then you can see it recognizes that as a nav host fragment. So what can we do now with this visual mode here? You can see we can add a fragment here. So click on that little plus icon and you will see all of our fragments listed inside of that list. Let's click on run fragment. Then you can see we have that run fragment here. We can drag it around and that's what we want to do with each of our fragments. So we'll make sure not to choose those hill fragments here, of course, scroll down and choose the real fragments. So we have that setup fragment here. We Re rearrange them a little bit. Then we have the statistics fragment the tracking fragment and finally our main, not main activity, our settings fragment. We don't need to uh, drag in our main activity here because that is the activity that actually hosts all of our fragments and we actually just want to define the transitions between those five fragments here. Then let's actually rearrange those a little bit and zoom out here. That is our statistics fragment. Yeah, that looks fine. And now you can see if we click on a fragment, here is a little bubble. Just as constraint layout, we can take that bubble and drag it to another fragment to define a transition. So if we want to be able to navigate from our setup fragment to our run fragment, then we simply need to use that bubble and actually define a transition to itself. Simply delete that. 
then we can use that bubble and drag it to our run fragment. So that means we want to be able to navigate from our setup fragment to our run fragment. So what else transitions do we need? We want to be able to navigate from our run fragment to our tracking fragment. So when we click on that floating action button to track a new run, then we want to navigate from run fragment to tracking fragment. And we also want to be able to navigate from the tracking fragment back to the run fragment because if we finish a run and click on this finish run button, then it will actually save that run in our database and navigate back to our run fragment. So that is why we'll also need this transition from tracking fragment to our run fragment. And for the other fragments, we don't need to define transitions here because we will have a bottom navigation view with that run fragment, statistics fragment and settings fragment. And we don't need to define transitions for that because the bottom navigation view will handle the navigation for us. But what we need to change here is, you can see we have that little home symbol here, that house at the run fragment because we added the run fragment first. And that is actually the fragment that will show up first. But we don't want to show the run fragment first because of course we want to show the setup fragment first. So we right click on setup fragment and click on set as start destination to tell navigation components that we want to show that setup fragment first. And now if we navigate back to the code tab here in our nav graph, then you can see that Android Studio generated a whole bunch of code here, XML code. And you can see for each fragment, we have an action defined or actually only for those fragments, we actually declare an action. So an action is nothing different than a transition here. And you can see we can use that action, for example, now to navigate from the run fragment to our tracking fragment later on. So that was one part of our navigation. Now we need to set up our bottom navigation view. So the menu for that, that we are actually able to navigate with it. Let's go to our resource folder here, right click and create a new Android resource file for our bottom navigation view menu. And I will call it bottom nav menu and really make sure to select menu here as a resource type. Then press OK. And here's our menu XML file. Inside of this menu now we will have three items, one item for our run fragments. So we need to specify the ID and set it to run fragment. And that is now very important that you choose the exact same ID that your fragment has. Otherwise navigation components won't recognize it and won't be able to navigate for us. Then we will also set a title, call it your runs. And we will set an icon, which I will choose IC run here. You should already have that if you pulled my resources from my GitHub repository. Then we can close that tag off. Simply copy that item, paste it two more times, then change that ID to statistics fragment. So again, make sure that this is actually the ID of your statistics fragment. Change the title to statistics and the icon to IC graph, I called it. And finally, for this item, we will have the ID settings fragment. Change the title to settings and the icon to IC settings. That's it for our menu XML file. Now we can go back to our activity main XML file and scroll down to our bottom navigation view here and actually assign that menu file. So we write menu and pass our bottom nav menu here. Then we only need to write very few lines of code in Kotlin to actually set up our navigation and finish the setup. We can do that inside of our main activity. So open that up. And actually, I want to remove that injection here, of course, because we don't want to inject the run DAO inside of our main activity. That was just for testing purposes. And for now, we can also remove that at Android entry point annotation here, because currently we don't inject anything inside of this main activity. But first, what I want to do is I want to set the support action bar here. So set support action bar to our toolbar. This has nothing to do with that navigation component stuff right here, but that is just th something we need to do here. And I just don't want to forget about that. That just tells Android that our main toolbar is the toolbar I specified here. That is just the ID of my custom toolbar that I specified in the layout files. 
Anyways, what we want to do here is we want to set up our bottom navigation view and basically connect it with navigation components. And we can simply do that in a single line of code by writing bottom navigation view dot setup with nav controller. And here we can specify our nav host fragment dot find nav controller. So that will just now make sure that whenever we click on one item of that bottom navigation view that we will navigate to that specific fragment. And now we actually have a little problem because we have five fragments, but in only three of them, we want to show our bottom navigation view. And that is exactly the run fragment, the statistics fragment and the settings fragment. But we don't want to show that bottom navigation view inside of our setup fragment and our tracking fragment. So the easiest way to solve that problem is to add an on destination change listener to our nav host fragment. So we call nav host fragment dot find nav controller and here we will add an on destination change listener and we won't need that controller here so we can replace it with an underscore and also those arguments so actually this on, on destination change listener here will always be triggered when our destination changed with navigation components so what we can simply do is whenever we navigate to another fragment we simply check to which fragment we just navigated and if that fragment is the run fragment, statistics fragment or settings fragment, then we simply want to make our bottom navigation view visible. And in all other cases, we just make it invisible. Let's do that in here. We can use a when expression for that. So depending on this destination dot ID, so that will be the ID of the fragment we navigated to. If that ID is in R dot ID dot settings fragment r.id.run fragment and r.id.statistics fragment. If that is the case, then we want to call bottom navigation view dot visibility and set it to view dot visible because then we are inside of a fragment in which we want to show that bottom navigation view. And in all other cases, we want to set bottom navigation view dot visibility to view dot gone. So that is actually everything we need to do for that. In the last part of this tutorial, we will actually add our own transitions. So we make sure that when we click on that continue button inside of the setup fragment, that we will navigate to the run fragment. And we will also make sure to be able to click on the floating action button and navigate to the tracking fragment. So let's actually go to our fragments package here and open our setup fragment. In here, we want to override on view created because inside of that function, we will call button, not button, TV continue, it's a text view, and set an on click listener to that. Of course, later we will set it up that we can only click on continue if we provided correct data. So if we entered something for the name and the weight, and we will also make sure to only show that setup fragment on the first app launch. But for now, just for testing purposes, we will just add that navigation right now. And we can very easily do that by writing find nav controller and call that navigate afterwards. And here you can see we need to provide a resource ID. And that is exactly the ID I showed you before inside of our nav graph. You can see we have those actions here and those actions have IDs. And if we want to perform such an action, such a transition, we simply pass this ID to the navigate function. So let's go back to setup fragment and we want to navigate to r.id dot action setup fragment to run fragment. And that really is everything we need to do to perform that navigation. So let's actually do the same for our run fragment to our tracking fragment, go inside of our run fragment, overwrite on view created here. And here we want to call our fab, our floating action button and set an on click listener to that. Inside of this on click listener, we will call find nav controller dot navigate and we want to navigate to r dot id dot run fragment to tracking fragment. And a little thing I forgot here is if we take a look in our main activity, I told you that we don't need this at Android entry point annotation because we don't inject anything here, but that is bullshit. Forget about that. We of course need this annotation because this activity hosts fragments and we want to inject stuff into those fragments. So that is why we need that. Otherwise your app will crash, but simply add this again and then run our app. 
and try out if everything is working. Here you can see our setup fragment will display at first and if we now click on continue we will be navigated to our run fragment and here you can see we can navigate to the statistics fragment to the settings fragment and if we click on the floating action button we will be taken to the tracking fragment so our navigation works perfectly fine so i hope this video helped you to understand all that navigation component stuff if it did then i would love to see you as my new subscriber if you didn't subscribe already and also please let me know in the comments what you think about this video have a good day see you in the next video bye bye